All right, so last review of the year. And you know what, not the least, I've been toying around for the past two weeks with an awesome motherboard, which uh, apparently, not apparently, which is a model on how to balance performance, enthusiastness, robustness, and features. And Asus is always really good in going in extremes, but this time they applied a lot of their know-how on somewhat of an entry level, of an expensive entry level, and i explain this later. Uh, today we are reviewing the Prime X299 Deluxe 2. And there's so much to unpack, there's so much to talk about, but one thing is for sure, it is probably the best motherboard I've reviewed all year long. Because the X299 chipsets has such a longer lifespan than any other chipset, such as the Z370 or Z390, which only lasts about 10 to 12 months, it really gives the opportunity to manufacturers to focus and instead of releasing new chipset motherboards, to evolve the existing series. For example, uh, we had the Prime X299A, which is an entry level uh, for that series. Then we had the Prime X299 Deluxe, which is the same chipset with the same features, and really they are the very same motherboards, but the Deluxe tried to um, bring in a couple more features and some design improvements. But when you go to the Deluxe 2, when there is enough time and room, for Asus to release a Deluxe 2, it's not just some improvement. It usually comes with a full redesign, a full reshape of the motherboard on the very same chipset. And the very next generation of chipset motherboard, if there was an X499, for example, in a year or two, then it will probably be based on that very design. So we have a peek on the future, if you will, and a peek on what future generation of X motherboards will feel and look like. But okay, enough talk, let's jump right in. The Prime X299 Deluxe 2 comes in an ATX form factor, meaning 24.4 cm wide for 30.5 cm long. It is powered by an LGA2066 CPU socket, which can support all of the X-Series Intel Core processors. VRM-wise, it's getting a little bit confusing, and Asus, uh, for the past few months, has been a little bit uh, tricky in a way when they talk about VRM uh, and the power dispension to their CPU. They're talking about a 12 plus 2 power stages and that's what it is but there are only eight phases feeding them so no big improvement compared to the Prime X299 A and Deluxe. I do not foresee any kind of thermo throttling. I think this board can handle absolutely any kind of CPU and almost any kind of overclocking you want to throw at it but I will regret the fact that Asus is not really, really being super honest when it comes to describing how many phases there are on the board. So again, 12 uh, power stages, sure thing, but only eight phases. Important point. Memory wise, if you are running on a four core CPU, your board will be running in a dual channel RAM configuration, which can support up to 64 gigabyte of DDR4 RAM, overclockable up to 4.266 gigahertz. But if you are running a CPU with six cores and more, then your board can support a quad channel configuration and up to 128 gigabyte of DDR4 RAM, overclockable as well at 4.266 gigahertz and that is in both cases 133 megahertz more than available in its two predecessors the prime x299a and the prime x299 deluxe so many names to remember one day i will go mad Storage-wise, our board can support up to three M.2 solicited drives, and I say finally. I mean, usually at that level, uh, you have Ace Rock and MSI who are going on the three-way M.2 solicited drive configuration. I am excited and happy to see it finally on a Prime series. And yet another improvement that we've seen on the smaller Z390 series motherboards with Asus, the very fact that our chipset is now separated from our 
M.2 solid state drive heat shields. We, we, a small improvement again, but something which will reduce the dissipation and the transfer, the communicative effect uh, of heat dissipation or heat transfer between the chipset and the M.2 solid state drives themselves. So kudos for finally introducing this on the X299 uh, motherboard. Of course, our X299 chipset is Obtain ready, meaning that all of our M.2 solid state drives can transfer and swap data up to 32 gigabit per second each. But of course, that will produce a lot of heat, and that is why both of our horizontal M.2 solid state drives have been equipped with uh, heat shields, which themselves have been equipped with thermopads. Now, I have only one remark and critic to make here is where they've been placed. They're gonna find themselves right under video cards, which of course produce a lot of heat they are the ones who produce the most heat in your build and i am afraid that we're gonna find some of this heat of course transfer right on our uh, m.2 solid state drives and of course get some thermo throttling so i would keep this in mind uh, when uh, choosing where to put the bootable m.2 solid state drive and prioritize the vertical mount and keep the two other horizontal uh, positions for only storage it will protect the overall performances of your build. Export wise, we have five third generation PCIe Expresses, two single slots, single speeds, and three 16 slots, which can all run up to 16 full bus speeds. So finally, we have a real three way GPU configuration compatible motherboard, both in SLI and cross. Fire. So that's really, really cool. It, of course, it will be depending on how many PCIe lanes you have available on your CPU, but potentially you can run equally powerful video cards on that crazy motherboard and I love it. And of course, that is why the three 16 lane slots have been metallically reinforced. Moving on, we have eight third generation SATA plugs, which can all transfer up to six gigabit per second. IOIs, first let me know that unlike its predecessor, the Prime X299 Deluxe 2 comes with an integrated IO shield, which I absolutely love. And starting from the left, we have two second generation USB plugs, which can transfer data up to 480 megabit per second. Four 3.1 first generation USB plugs, which can transfer data up to five gigabit per second. We have two Ethernet plug, one which can run up to one gigabit per second, and the second one which can run up to five gigabit per second, which I absolutely love and which was not present, of course, on the Prime X299A and X299 Deluxe. So a great upgrade, but this is not the most exciting stuff on this IO shield, believe it or not. Uh, we have two display ports which are coupled with two type C, meaning that our standable three does no longer come in a separated uh, PCIe Express card, but is now integrated uh, in our motherboard. And so they are directly connected to our, your video cards. So basically you can run up to six different displays per plug, per type C. This is awesome. This is probably a game changer because I've never seen it on any X or X299 motherboards. This is real innovation right here. And I think that is something I'm gonna call it. I'm gonna say that's one of the things which we are going to see on a lot of X299 and possibly X399 on the MD side motherboard. So really good oasis and keep your eyes peeled for the replication of that evolution that's a lot of fun a dual band wi-fi adapter which can run up to 1.73 gigabit per second and which is two by two mumimo giving us individual download stream and better coverage and finally our usual eight channel six way in and out audio panel right here all right so front panel connector wise we have one second generation usb connector right here two 3.1 first generation usb connector right there and one 3.1 second generation type c front panel connector right here meaning that yes we have on this motherboard up to three type c 3.1 second generation connector which blows my mind i think this is awesome another first timer i'm not sure i mean please do do correct me but i think this is the first time i see three um type c connectors front panel and io 
on one single motherboard. So super double, triple kudos to Asus for that. We just have covered the most general part of our motherboard, which is already awesome and super exciting. As you can tell, I barely can sit on my seat, but here's my favorite part, the enthusiastic part of this motherboard is crazy insane awesome how many times did i say awesome in this review i have no idea it's probably here i'm gonna count them for you and starting with the fans this board can support up to seven pwm fan connectors two of which can be used for all-in-one and a full-fledged water pump so yes you could potentially uh, run a two-loop custom water cooling system which is awesome. We also have one thermal sensor right here, two Aura compliant RGB connectors right here, and one addressable Aura compliant RGB connector right there. Yes, I have put the fan connectors and the RGB connectors in the same section, simply because Asus has provided with this motherboard another extension, a hub extension, which they call the fan extension card two. It's basically uh, what we had before in the previous models, with more connections onto it. So we can pass from seven to 13 uh, PWM fan connectors, four thermo sensors and five RGB Aura compliant connectors in total. This is crazy. This is awesome and crazy. It doesn't stop there though, because this fan extension card comes in a 2.5 inch form factor. So you can attach it to an SSD tray uh, or placement on your casing. So nothing groundbreaking, but very well thought coming from the engineering of ASUS. Kudos. Going back on the aesthetics, let's not forget that we have two RGB Aura compliance strips which are nested onto a motherboard. One right under our I.O. roofing and one under our chipset. And they look, you've guessed it, awesome. Moving on, we do have a Q-code error screen right here, which will allow us to monitor the different error codes that our build will throw at us and which will allow an easy troubleshooting. But in addition, it is paired with a two inch light dash OLED screen, which is gorgeous. The definition is absolutely amazing. It'll give us the usual uh, information uh, that live dash usually give, meaning frequency of the processor, even the voltage that you are feeding to your processor in overclocking configuration and the fan RPM. So it's really focus on to what your CPU is doing at all time. And the fact that it is two inches big is for me a big deal because uh, I'm not that young anymore. I need glasses and I can spot from afar what's going on with my processor. So I have to give it, as you can tell, I really like this motherboard. Kudos to Asus for this. Moving on, we have a bunch of soldered buttons, the usual power reset buttons right here and our clear CMOS and flashback button. All right, so here a little critic. I'm not so happy to find those soldered button onto the motherboard. I love the fact that we have them, but it's not surprising. They should be here when you're talking about this price range, but they should be placed on the back of our IO shield. This is where it makes sense. This is where it guarantees us an easy access and that's where everybody puts them. So usually, so for me, I, if I want to do a, a BIOS update or clear the CMOS, I don't want to remove the panels of my build. I just want to be able to push the button uh, on the back of my O shield as I've been accustomed to. So not too happy about this, I have to admit. And finally, we have an easy debugger, debugger, hamburger, debugger, debugger RGB LED lights right here, which will inform us on what stage of the boot our boot sequence. Yes, um, I love this. I think that, again, for troubleshooting, coupled with the QLED error and, and the dash, uh, it really helps us to uh, get our build running and rerunning if it breaks down uh, during the history of the world. Don't know where I'm going with that. In conclusion, this board will cost you about $500 before taxes, which makes it, I think, the most expensive prime out there. And it's not that surprising looking at all the features, but I'll say this. I love this motherboard. I'm not so happy about the pricing, but 
when you see what's in there, it does not surprise me one bit. I mean, it's not all happy, cloudy, beautiful. Uh, there are a few critics, as I mentioned earlier. I'm not so happy about the positioning of our buttons. I'm not so happy about the positioning of our M.2 solid state drives, horizontal ones. And uh, basically, I think a little bit that I think that it was a bit deceptive from Asus to talk about 12 power phases when you have only eight VRMs, which are plenty enough. So again, needless to talk about. 12 power phases, uh, that, 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 made, that was completely useless. But none of those are deal breakers. This motherboard can push any processors to its absolute limit. The robustness, the engineering of this board is absolutely amazing. Um, you have real initiatives, you have real uh, innovations. For one, you have the fact that you have a dual Thunderbolt 3.0 uh, built in the IO shield. Uh, I love this. Uh, yeah, well, the IO housing, uh, I love this. We have a better heat sinks design, both uh, for the VRMs and the separation between the chipset and the M.2 solid state drive heat sinks. And finally, uh, another novelty is the fact that we have a second Ethernet which can run up to 5 gigabit per second. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And it does all that, keeping whatever made the Prime X299A and Deluxe such a good motherboard. For one, it keeps all that stuff in ATX form factor, not EATX, meaning it's it's not small, but it's definitely compact enough to put in any kind of case or 99% of the cases out there. And that I think is really important when it comes to the good design of a good motherboard. And of course, the Prime X299 Deluxe 2 is equally, equally, targeting uh, gamers, enthusiast builders, and workstationers. I mean, you can run up to three 16 full bus speed video cards, which is absolutely awesome. You can run two or one uh, custom water cooling uh, configuration on this stuff. And of course you can overclock your processors to the moon without having any fear or any thermal throttling. It's just a performant monster. So yes, it's a winner. It's, like I said in the beginning, the best motherboard I've reviewed all year. Uh, just five days away from 2019. And you know, for 500 bucks, I know it's not a small price tag, but if you're going to an X299 powered build, let's face it, money is not the biggest issue here. You're definitely going for more expensive components. And after reviewing this particular board, I don't think there's anything I'd rather see in my build. Yeah. All right.